this is Brooke and I will be doing a quick tutorial on how to use UX pin to lay out a page quickly and add some interaction. So I have UX pin already open and I'm going to go ahead and click the plus to create a new project. Once I've got a new project, I have the choice of either importing a Photoshop or sketch document or creating a prototype. I'm going to start with a prototype. One of the things that you'll notice is your default canvas is set to infinity in terms of width. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start right away by starting with a responsive version and I'm going to use a standard um, web. Uh, so 1224 for wide websites and I'm going to add that breakpoint. I'm going to um, select the default and delete that breakpoint because I don't want to have an infinite width. I want my page to be contained. So 1224 is a good start. Then I'm also going to create a phone version uh, portrait, so 320 pixel width. And add that breakpoint. Um, now I've got my two canvases and I can start my design. Uh, UX Pen is pretty easy to use. You can just drag and drop images onto the canvas and uh, resize them. Um, actually, there is no zoom function within the software, so you do need to use your browser zoom uh, to zoom in and out. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, you can just reposition your elements. Uh, and then if I wanna go ahead and add some text, then I can use this quick search menu to search for text. Once I've got the text, I've got a dialog box open here where I can select uh, some fonts and sizes and colors. I can either go from my favorite colors, which I've already selected, or I can use uh, this. It's got a range of hues. Of that same color and I can also use a color picker which is pretty convenient so I'm going to go ahead and do the color picker and um, just kind of pick from the page and there you go. Um, and there you've got your text. Then if I want to add uh, something like a button I can just drag and drop it. There are so many default UI elements with default settings that makes it very convenient. Um, you've got the properties section where you can change things like the border radius. Um, and then you've got text where you can change the text color um, and font, etc. Um, so and change that you can go ahead and make it um, whatever color you want I'm gonna go ahead and pull from my favorites and then uh, you can also add a pattern if you want you can change the border style so I'm gonna go ahead and create a border of um, two pixels and then um, you can also change the background if you want it to have a transparent background, then you bring the opacity down to zero. And then under properties, you can also add custom, um, you know, custom margin and paddings and things like that. So uh, you can either have them be the same or you can have them be different. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit taller, a little bit larger, and there you go. Um, you can also turn the shadow off. Um, and uh, that's pretty much how you can play with that. Um, standard undo uh, if you want to go back. And then uh, in terms of interactivity, if I want this button, uh, how about I want this header to appear once this button is clicked? Then I add an interaction 
and I say new interaction, and I would say on click, I would like to show this header. And then animation, I want it to slide in. And then I want it to, you know, you can delay the time in milliseconds. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, 600 milliseconds. And in order to see that effect, because if I go ahead and preview it here, sorry, let's go ahead and preview it. You'll see that um, I'm clicking and it's animating, but the header's already there. If I want it so that the header uh, slides in but isn't visible beforehand, then I need to say on page load, hide, no animation, add that, and then your live preview should update. So click, header slides in. So that shows you a little bit of animation. If you want something to appear, um, Maybe when you're lower down the page, then you go ahead and you can create your element that you have. And if you want to have something appear upon scroll, for example, let's go ahead and have another box. Um, and this is going to be um, maybe a green box. And that is going to appear upon scroll. So when I scroll to a certain point, I'm going to have the screen box appear. Then you need to um, first look at your ruler on the left hand side, you'll see um, a certain pixel number. So I'm going to say when the screen scrolls to about 800 is when I want that green box to appear. So on interaction, I would say on um, let's see here, window is scrolled to 800 pixels, then I want to show uh, this, I want to um, fade it in, and I want to show this element. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Um, knowing that it will always show uh, unless I define that it is hidden on page load then I need to select page load and hide no delay and then I go ahead and check my preview sorry so it looks like I didn't pick a pixel height that was long enough for it to show so I'm going to go ahead and reselect my show and I'm going to pick something a little bit shorter and see if I can see it now. Uh, let's do 200 pixels. Save. Make sure it's in the front. Try that again. Oh, I don't think I'm getting down the page far enough, perhaps. Let's see. There we go. So you really need to get to the bottom of your screen. Notice how my screen's pretty high. You got to get the bottom of your screen to that point. And to make it a little bit more obvious, I'm going to go ahead and delay that fade in. So just keep going back to my interaction button. Keep going back to my element, clicking it to edit. And I'm going to put it to 1200 milliseconds. That should be a little more obvious. There we go. Just kind of fades in. Excellent. Whoop. And that is how you do um, animations. If you want to edit the text, you can just double click it, edit, reposition it. You grab the side of the handles if you want to rotate it. Um, you can use the undo buttons. One of the most helpful features here is the um, iteration. So you can create kind of save states. I can create a new iteration and come back to it. So maybe I'll call this first save, 
or you could say, um, you know, whatever version it is that you're on. And then if I change something, I can go ahead and save it as second save. Then I can always go back to first save and revert to that version. which is really helpful. So there you go. Um, now you have seen uh, how easy it is to change uh, and create a UX pen document. You've got all these different UI libraries that you can import to make your job so much easier and you can edit the elements individually so that you can customize the interface import images, etc, etc. You can also import images within a container. So that's very convenient as well. Um, so I think this concludes my quick training on how to use the UX pen tools. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back for more. Thanks. Bye.